This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Nobody said it would be easy. From the frightening canyons of Bathurst to the tricky chicanes at Zolder, the Camel GT Series is throwing everyone in at the deep end this season and hoping they can swim. This Belgian circuit has made the most patient of drivers bang at their steering wheel and left the gutsiest of racers weeping in their hands. There's no doubt that whatever A game was brought last week needs to be dragged out again as we get ready to watch round two of the iRacing Camel GT series. And you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing channel and the iRacing Esports Network. Hi, I'm Joe Peek and with me in the booth is Samuel Ryman. Behind the scenes is our director, the Dr. Amjad Yaman, and he's using cameras provided by Ducky Beard. Sam, this is a not often loved circuit here on iRacing. In case some of our viewers haven't experienced this place, give this give them an introduction to it. Well, isn't it nice for those viewers that they're listening to someone who actually does like a circuit? Here's older. Obviously, when you think of Belgian race tracks, normally your mind is gonna think of the infamous Spa Francorchamps. But this circuit, it it couldn't be more different from Spa recently, and it definitely has its own selling points. As you mentioned, Joe, lots of different chicanes that can annoy some drivers. However, it also provi uh, provides us with opportunities for drama and uh, pass is and also uh, seeing which of these drivers can handle the massive power that these cars produce with the lack of grip the best because it is definitely tricky uh, getting back on the power coming out of these slow speed corners it's about two and a half miles in length 10 turns we're racing on the alternate configuration so the final chicane of a lap isn't as uh, slow and dramatic as what it normally is although they still have to do like a little left right switch back there let's give you a better idea of it with our gsrc lap guide all right we've got johnny bell and the gsrc nissan so let's do a lap around zolder Erst will tempt you into braking later and later into it, but the downhill nature makes it easy to understeer wide by carrying too much speed. It's not uncommon to see people plow through the gravel runoff. Quickly, you've got to switch sides for Stedenbach, where the exit has some nasty curbs that you'll want to avoid drifting into. It effectively acts as one long corner on your way through canal, and then you're faced with one of the more critical turns, Bianchi. This is a medium speed right-hander, but what makes it important is it leads onto the long straight down to the Kleine Chicane. It's pretty common for drivers to use this to try to set up a pass into this heavy braking zone. Avoid hitting the tall sausage curbs because they'll absolutely destroy the Nissan. Bleed back on the power and then you'll climb the crest and swing through Butte. Hug the left side because you'll want the widest entry possible into Turleman. There's three apexes around this fiddly little chicane and it's easy to screw up any one of them. On top of that, you won't really get a full blast of power because there's a final banked right-hander that isn't quite flat out. Over the hump, once again, hold left, and now you've got the Boulderberg hairpin. A lot of overtakes tend to happen here, but beware of the over-under because sometimes your opponent can get you right back on the exit. It's a little weave through rent, though watch out for wheel spin as you get up to speed. Then comes the Ix chicane. In the alternate layout, it's frighteningly fast with only a lift needed. Hold it together, get back on the power, and hopefully you've now finished a lap around Zolder. You see a very quick lap around here at Zolder. Real quick, let's take a look at the points. There's uh, not too much that's different from the results, of course, as we take a look at the GT, uh, GTPs. Uh, Fabian Gerber, uh, of course, up at the top, followed by Fabian Jungblut. So, so two Fabians up there as uh, Jamie Hall and Phil Lake uh, come in for Dirty Torque there in third and fourth. And Louis Emerton manages to get himself within the top five. Uh, Phil uh, Lake and Jamie Hall, of course, were on course for better finishes, but uh, 
didn't have a good time at Bathurst, unfortunately. Not uncommon out there in Australia. Let's go to Sam for the GTO points, as uh, we unfortunately don't have any of the 2M classes yet. Yeah, not a whole lot of participation in the AM classes at the opening round, and uh, uh, as we go off that point, we're talking just pretty much about the opening round so far. These are basically the points based off of the first race of the season, so there's still lots of jumping around that can take place. The two Americans up top right there with Rob Olyanek leading Nicholas Mekanos, Ove Trandre, Reed Miller and Sergei Serbin rounding out the standings, but being this early in the season, all of that can change and they also get two drop weeks by the end of the year. Exactly. So. This race could have a big effect on it. Now, uh, those drop weeks uh, will probably be taken by a lot of drivers, which we'll talk about here in a second with the race details, because we are in round two out of 12. There's those two drop weeks that you see. Uh, the race is 40 minutes long. This is a sprint format for them. They have no scheduled stop for fuel because of that. Now, you can still come in and take repairs if you need it, but your race is going to be significantly compromised if you do so. 25 points for a win uh, in each of the classes, of course, today. And each of these classes are being shown to you live on the iRacing eSports Network. All you got to do is subscribe, then you can get the Camel GT series in your YouTube feed each and every week. So make sure and head over to their YouTube page, click on the big red button, and you can catch all of the action here in these classic 80s machinery. Now, I mentioned that uh, some drivers are going to be taking drop weeks. Uh, it apparently seems, Sam, that uh, everybody's a little bit more into Watkins Glen this morning, but no matter, we should get a good race out there. Yeah, well, um, as you mentioned, Zolder isn't the most popular of circuits. Maybe you can speak more to that. Uh, I think a lot of drivers feel that uh, tracks with chicanes kind of break the flow up a little bit too much. It doesn't surprise me that we don't have a great attendance here. We have 13 cars, but still, you know, not, not what we've seen in other Camel GT races. Uh, but, but the thing that does surprise me about all that is it's second round of season. I feel that those who would want to be uh, competitive in this championship would want to get out to an early points lead. But whatever the matter, it means there's a lot of points on the table for the drivers who are here today. And you, you talk about giving the iRacing Esports Network a shout out, Joe. It's something I've noticed on the iRacing's top 10 highlights, or even the top 10 lowlights sometimes, at the end of each month. As this series regularly comes onto those highlight reels, we definitely see some drama in this series, whether we have a full field or not. Certainly is the case a lot of times. As we watch Johnny Bell, who ran our lap in the Nissan, come around to take his second qualifying time, and it is not faster, so he'll stay P6. Justin Albrecht holds the provisional pole in the GTP class, and Rob Olenek, much like we saw last week, continuing his form, he holds the pole down in the GTOs. We're still waiting on Tanner McCullough to get uh, time on the board, and he's certainly not going to get one this time, because that first lap, he must have had an off. That brings me to an interesting point here. Uh, you have a fair bit of experience at this track, Sam, and it it seems like off tracks, uh, the slowdown penalties play a big part in how these races unfold. Yeah, that's certainly true. And uh, obviously, jo Johnny Bell has a time in, so he must have had the lap cleaner than what you saw on the lap guide. I do want to keep half an eye on Tandem McCullough, though, because I was actually in a practice session just half an hour ago, reminding myself of a couple points on this track. And I noticed he did seem to be struggling. So uh, I hope he's uh, got a couple of things sorted out, maybe just testing the waters, and we'll see him on top form today. He's abandoned the lap, apparently, because he's sent it into the wall. So Tanner is going to start at the back of his field. As Johnny Bell's just getting a little bit more practice in. I guess practicing the pit entry. Hopefully he doesn't have to use that practice today. As I mentioned, there's no scheduled stops. So at this point, everybody has put their laps in. It is essentially just everyone getting a little bit more warm-up in. This is John Keefe, you see on screen, who missed his second lap as well but a 114.7 was good enough for fourth on the grid. We uh, 
have uh, a few fast drivers missing out there today. I do notice. So this could be an open goal for a few people to try and get one in. Looks like everybody is now coming into the pits and is done for the day. So let's go through our starting grid uh, before they get gridded up here. Justin Albrecht is going to be on the pole with Phil Lake starting on the outside of him. Phil is overdue for a win and Martin Kraterich will be P3. Then in fourth, it'll be John Keefe with the inside of row three, having Fabian Jungluth there. Johnny Bell will start on the outside of that row. And a newcomer that I don't recall seeing driving in the broadcast races, Peter Mischeck, will be starting in seventh. He will be followed by Tana McCullough, who we mentioned did not get a time in. Sam? Yeah, here over um, in our GTO class, we have Robo Yanek on the pole ahead of Nicholas McCannos. Ove Trangere will be starting third in class. He'll actually be 11th overall once you move Tanda McCullough up. And then the final row will be Simo Rabba and Michael Haynes. So once again, even if uh, one of our uh, Aldis crashes out on the opening lap, they're still going to get a top five out of us. So lots of points on the table here. Yeah, it looks like we'll actually get a full pace lap. I thought maybe we'd start uh, a little bit uh, later in the lap, but the Porsche pace car is going to take them around for one full circuit. That gives us some time to talk a little bit about this track, Sam. Uh, I One thing that always strikes me about here is is some of these curves seem a little bit nasty. Are there any ones in particular that uh, either class needs to watch out for? Well, once you get through the first few turns, you get up to that first chicane. That one is especially nasty. It can launch you if you overshoot it. Or you can spin off if you undershoot it. The second chicane, eh, there's cut course penalties there if you get that wrong. It's, a li it's, it's tricky, but it's a little bit more forgiving. It's almost like sometimes it's uh, easier to, to get it wrong, but but you still survive. That, that first chicane that they come up to, and we'll get a good look at them here doing the pace lap, <laughs> that's the one where you're holding on to dear life sometimes. Yeah, I know I've uh, destroyed a few cars coming over that one over the years. So we watch the GTPs take off and work their way down through Erst, one of the spots we expect maybe a few overtakes to happen. And they'll switch back into three right-handers in a row here. Certainly going to be testing the downforce of these prototypes with the uh, ground effects that they use. This track, of course, known for a little bit of tragedy, unfortunately. Probably most famous for the death of Gilles Villeneuve happening here back in the 80s in Formula One. In 1982 and uh, that black spot really is unfortunate because it has put on a good show for us especially here on iRacing and produced some really good racing in real life despite the chicanes but uh, it's in the beautiful Belgian countryside out here and hopefully we'll have a good one out today as we check out the GTOs behind our pole sitter Rob Olenek now leading up to that Kleine chicane yeah, and the other tricky thing about this chicane trail, you can see how long we've been riding on the rear wing of this uh, Audi here. That's a long, long straight. The cars are carrying a lot of speed into this chicane. You can see it, it definitely doesn't have a good flow to it. Uh, you can screw it up in so many ways. And now we jump back up to the GTP, so you're going through the second chicane. You can see it, it also it, it's not the prettiest looking set of corners in the world, but you're not carrying as much en entry speed. It's a little bit uphill. You've got a, sh a shorter run from the previous corner. So, it, you know, like, like I say, that's uh, it, it's definitely a um, part of a course that you want to get right. But here's another thing, Joe. I, I mentioned I was practicing about half an hour ago. This right-hander here, normally this turn gets overlooked. You know, oh, it's just a 90-degree right-hander. What could go wrong? These cars go so slow through this turn, and they've got so much power in them. But down for this long front straight, they can easily wheel spin and get that wrong. Something to keep an eye on for sure. But they're almost done with this pace lap. So the Porsche pace car will peel in as they... Come on through the Ix chicane. And it is going to be 
our pole sitter, Justin Albrecht, who has control of the field. He's stacking them up, though. Now he goes, waiting to see that he can get a good jump, and he does. Phil Lake falls back in a second. It is a battle for third between John Keith and Martin Kratryk. Keith is going to come out on top. Let's head to the GTOs. Well, there's already a battle for the lead, maybe, in GTOs. They all went single file through the uh, chicane there, coming to the start line. But Rob next sliding around a little bit. They're packed up first, second, and third. Michael Haynes has actually already had an off. He had an off coming to the green flag, but he gets back on track. It just drops him back to last. The top three have a little bit of a breakaway. That is Olenek, Rupanos, and Trangarade stretching away from the rest of the field to the Kleinus chicane for the first time. We ride on board with Ove. A little bit of a peek to the inside from Nick, but nothing doing there. All these drivers minding their P's and Q's early on, Joe. They know you've got to race the track rather than the other cars around here. Sometimes the easiest way to make a pass is to just pressure the car in front of you into a mistake. It's missing anything up at the front for the GTPs. This is Really our closest battle, Olenek leading ahead of Mukanos and Trangarade. They hit the Bulderberg hairpin for the first time and nobody makes a move quite yet. Oh, but a lot of wheel spin off the corner for Ove Trangarade and he loses out. It's the first lap complete for the GTPs already. The GTO field coming through now. They're about to put lap one down on the board. You can see our clock running down from 40 minutes in the top left corner of your screen. This will be about a 32 lap race. I've been keeping an eye on Tanner McCullough because I expected him to make a climb through the field. He did get by Peter Mischeck. And now he's going to try and get one on Johnny Bell. He outbreaks him down into the Kleine chicane. He's clean through there. Beautiful move from the number seven. Excuse me, number two, actually. Yeah, the problem is, Joe, this is a challenging circuit, and he's obviously been having difficulties in practice and also qualifying. He seems to be under control now, but unfortunately with these cars, it only takes one minor miscue, and we got one. Well, that sets him back all the way to the back of the field already. Watch the replay of Tanner, see if we can figure out what exactly happened. We're on board the Canadian. Maybe a little bit too much of that power you were talking about? Yeah, that would be my guess. Uh, it looked like on Yeah, it looks like it just got loose. Yeah. Hmm. Well, the setup not to his liking. He's six seconds behind and he's got some work to do. Let's jump back to the top three in the GTOs. And Rob Olenek still leads the same as it was, ahead of Mukanos, ahead of Trangray. Ove's got his car back together, has regained the ground. They sit equidistant apart at just about half a second away from one another, contesting this podium position. Yeah, Nicholas Mukanos has been sticking his nose out. He's letting Rob know that he's there. He just hasn't done anything with him yet. You see the similar paint schemes. They are teammates, so he's probably not going to want to wreck him. But if he can, you know, intimidate him, maybe just make him slip up a little bit, that'd be worth a position. They also, I'm sure, want to try and keep Ove Trandre back there in third position. Also, the other thing I've noticed right now, Drew, is that there is a lot of cloud cover on the circuit. I wonder who's going to benefit from that. Oh, oh, heavy, and Rob goes off. He was heavy over the curbs and into the wall. Just barely touches it. Not on the tires, though, so not sure how soft of a hit that is. Look at how long it's taken to get turned around as we go to replay now. He's losing a ton of time here. Yeah, he just... And this, this is a combination of uh, this chicane not being kind to mistakes and Nicholas Mucanos kind of pressuring him into a mistake, to be honest. He just turned in a tiny bit too early and it never really, he never really got it back. So he does recover to third. Michael Haynes does not manage to overtake him. But he's a whole 18, almost 19 seconds behind Ove. It's... Essentially now probably going to be a two-horse race for the lead in the GTOs as we rejoin Trangrade. Now in second, Mukanos in first. 
the last place GTO of Simo Rabe must have had an off at some point. He just really got in the way of the GTP leaders. The gap between Justin Albrecht and Philip Lake was a second. It has now stretched out to over three seconds. Philip Lake really got stuck behind him at the worst part of the circuit. There's more drivers going by. That was Kraytarik, now John Keefe. And he's joined by Fabian Jungluth there in P5. Uh, Rob is going to stay out, though. The car isn't damaged enough that he needs to come in. He scrubbed off a lot of speed before he got into the wall. The problem is he's uh, uh, trying to do the math right here. About 20, 30 seconds back of Nicholas Mikanos now. Certainly is a long ways behind. We're barely five minutes into this race as we ride on board with Young Bluth. Looking ahead at John Keefe. Coming off of Bianchi and down into Kleina. It's not close enough this time through, but both are safely through that first chicane. There's a Keith and June Blues for fourth place in GTP. Might be one of the closer battles we have out there on the track right now. But again, this early in the race, it's so easy to mist make mistakes here. I almost wouldn't worry about speaking fighting for positions. Sorry, speaking of which, Martin Kratrick must have made a mistake because he just absolutely got blown by by John Keith. When that oh, he got held up, we understand, by the traffic. All right, well, that's another way to make a pass. And now, all of a sudden, we have John Keith in third. Martin is down to fourth and Jungbluth is in fifth and uh, now we have yeah and you see there on the replay why now we have one thing we haven't had so far this race and that's a ticked off driver and we'll see if that helps or hurts him <laughs> in getting third place back yeah the, that was just a an unfortunate miscommunication between both drivers <laughs> everybody going a little bit wide coming out of Bianchi uh, as they both went to the inside Unfortunately, at the same time, and Kratrik got checked up for that. So that moves him down to P4, John Keefe up to third. Of course, traffic giveth and traffic taketh. The same thing could easily happen to John. Yeah, the nice thing for our two leaders now is if the same thing happens to them, they've got almost a 10 second buffer over everybody else. So uh, we certainly have a bit of a battle for the lead in, well, a battle for the lead in GTO. I wouldn't say a battle for the lead in GTP, but certainly uh, Justin Albrecht has got to keep an eye on his relative there. Uh, and then we certainly have a battle for third in GTP right now, although they'll hold in station while they're in clear traffic. Yeah, Keith making good. Oh, uh, wait, Keith, is, Keith really Keith? slow. You know what? Say, he ma he slowed yeah. down. Yeah, out of the last chicane. You and I started thinking the exact same thing, and that cost him that spot right back. Kratrik up there. Youngblue to his inside as they come through Canal. They're going to go through Bianchi too wide, potentially, as they've got traffic up in front of them. Kratrik caught up once again. Keith thinks about split in the middle, thinks better of it, stays behind his rival. Looks to the inside as they come down to the Kleine chicane. He is weaving back and forth, gets to the back of him. That shoves him over the curb. Somehow, Kratrik holds control of the car, and that keeps Martin in third, John in fourth, and Fabian in fifth after all is said and done. I am trying to work out how Martin does not have a slowdown unless he does and he just says chose not to serve it yet. Because he was way over that curb in the chicane. That was a wild bit of action for half a lap. Everybody's still running, thankfully. That car that they were lapping too, we should mention, was Rob Olenek, our third place in the GTOs. Thankfully didn't have anyone to battle with, but he was desperately trying to get out of everybody's way. Here and it might be because he stuck to the near side of the sausage curves that he probably got away without getting the slowdown penalty there. Uh, meanwhile, is this our GTO leaders having one of the GTP cars go through them? You see there's still Mukanos in front, uh, Trangere behind. Yeah, that was Phil Lake coming through. Andre just hovering in the background. Maybe waiting for something similar like we saw with Olenek for Nick Mukanos to have an error. As actually Nick went a little defensive down there into the second chicane. 
the GTP leaders have just lapped these two, so that tells you uh, how much quicker those cars are than the Audis around this circuit, and also how small this circuit is. Yeah, certainly not terribly long. It's two and a half miles. As the battle continues for the lead. Trangere just hovering at about half a second behind Nick Mukanos. Everywhere he goes, just stalking him, making sure that he keeps him honest. And maybe he'll get aggressive towards the end. We'll wait and see. It's a little close down into Erst, but still can't find an opportunity. No real point to wait to make a pass around here, unless you just don't want the pressure of being the leading car. It's not exactly like you can make a last lap slingshot work anywhere on this circuit. You've got to take the opportunity when it comes. Right now, though, Nicholas McCannels has just had a pretty good race, but the opportunity might be coming with all these GTP cars catching them at a horrible part of the circuit. This is that battle for third. Yeah, Mark Gratryk. Comes up behind Trangerade. He's going to look around the outside. He gets one, but he doesn't get two. John Keefe going to try and follow him through. Oh, that's got to be a slowdown for Martin Kratrick, who goes way off at the second apex. Did he not? No, maybe not. I think he slowed up enough. He, he knew he would have got a slowdown. If he didn't slow up, he, he jumped on the brakes. I think he got away with it. Now he gets by the lead GTO. Keith full a little bit on the loud pedal there. I thought he had a bit of oversteer getting quite close to one of the Aldis as they go down the back straight. I guess it's the front straight now with the chicane taken out of it. <laughs> And he stays relatively close to Martin Kratrick, but they did drop uh, Fabian Jungluth by a significant margin through that traffic. I'll tell you what, one thing I learned from driving this car around here, Joe, a few moments ago, the, the amount of, you know, threshold braking you have to do for these slow chicanes, these prototype cars can stop quite well. So if you realize you're gonna go off, you can uh, recover from it, you know, you can slam on the brakes and stop that from happening. The problem is you don't want to risk a car behind passing you. And boy, oh, and off behind, behind them there, our fifth place car, Dream Blue, just went off over the again. That'll be a slowdown. Absolutely. He really cut it that time. Feel pretty certain about him having to give up time on that one. And... As all this is happening, Albrecht, by the way, is still our leader in the prototypes, and Kano still our leader in the Not missing much on either of those. Credit to Phil Lake for hovering around in second place in the prototypes, about two and a half seconds back, but he's got to start hustling. And challenge uh, Justin for that lead if he wants. You know, the one thing that disappoints me in, in Zolder and in, in iRacing here Sam, is that I, they may have scanned it a little bit too early because they've since added uh, Rally Cross to the game here. And uh, as I understand, there is a Rally Cross course at Zolder, is there not? I'll take your word for it. Um, there's plenty of grass wow. and gravel around there to make it work. The Simo Raba nearly got sideswiped by John Keefe. I don't know if we have time to get a replay from on board, but. Boy, John cut it awful close coming through Bianchi. Fortunately, it looks like we won't be able to catch that replay. Thankfully, he lives to fight another day and stays within touch of Martin. So out of tournament and turn eight, or excuse me, turn seven rather, down into turn eight here, Boulderberg, the sharp hairpin. And John's starting to lose touch slightly with Martin now. This lap, for some reason, Fabian is really confident. So, across the line for yet another lap completed. Getting close to the halfway point now. 20 minutes in will get us partway through this thing. Right on board, or what we're riding on board with Fabian Jungbluth giving chase to third and fourth. Fans of Tanner McCullough, bad news. He has recently taken, into, taken it into the pits. I'm checking to see if I can find out what exactly happened. This 
Seems to have been a bit ago, so not sure that we'll get a replay. Looks like it was the final chicane. And weirdly, he he hit the wall and then took it backwards on track, actually a fair bit, to get it into the pit lane so that he didn't have to do a full lap. Worth noting as Albert actually goes a little bit faster this lap, but Philip Lake has brought in the gap to the race lead a tiny bit. It was up to three seconds, and it was down to two and a half seconds. So still, uh, even though it's not a battle right now, Justin's... And here we go, comparison of our, of our lap times, and you can see there, they've been trading it back and forth a little bit. It looks like most of it really came from lap 10 there. He, he lost half a second. I'm going to guess that that is due to some lap traffic being in Justin's way. Otherwise, he was three of those five laps quicker than the likes of Phil Lake. Well, they'll catch more lap traffic again, Joe, because even now, uh, GTO leaders, Nicholas McCannos and Ove Trandere, they were lapped down within 15 minutes of this race. Well, 15 minutes times three, it's a 45, well, actually, no, it's a 40-minute race. So, so still, the, these GTP leaders are going to have to lap every single GTO car one more, if not two more times. And uh, that could certainly uh, result in some changes if, you know, it, it, it's not a big deal when they catch them at this part of the circuit, as we're seeing on screen here. The GTOs can just pull out the way, or the GTPs can uh, pull to the inside and make the pass. But we've seen that when they catch them on the back side of the circuit, into the woods, uh, that's where we get into trouble. Phil Lake really slicing through them as we go on board. He stays at about those 2.3 seconds. He's not giving up on this win. I have a feeling that Phil Lake is pretty hungry for a victory. He did get, I believe, as one or two of them at the very end of last season. But despite challenging for the championship all the way to the end of the season, uh, he just could not seem to get the luck on his side to take a victory. I think Martin Kredrick will be uh, quite happy if he comes out of this with a third place finish after all the drama the front end of his Tic Tac machine has seen here today. Uh, twin, okay, that's not Tic Tac apparently. Twin no. Tac, Tin Tau, okay. Uh, yes, it's uh, a uncopyrighted paint scheme, that uh, Tin Tau. The famous Tin Tau. I was going to say, I, I was trying to see how uh, Tic Tac had worked its way in through uh, the iRacing Esports filters. So, as Martin anyway, Kretschery the, yeah, finally yeah, sure, finds himself some free track. Yeah, and I'm sure his breath is uh, smelling quite nice up here in third position. Oh, and uh, we actually have something going on, so... Yeah, we've we've got Nick Lucanos caught by Trangrate and... They've got Peter Mischeck uh, in there trying to lap them. I was just thinking earlier, oh, a big mistake under breaking from Nick Mukanos. Almost lost the car, but somehow finds the apex. Ooh, this is getting tense, and, and Mischeck is being very, very patient back here. He himself is being lapped by, I believe that's Phil Lake back there? No, that's Albrecht, actually. He's just leader. blinked out there quite a bit. Getting all incredibly convoluted. So Mischak's going to stay to the side. Albrecht pulls through as they hit the final chicane, the Ick chicane. Now he gets the power down and is able to overtake his teammate, letting him go by. This has actually worked out much more in favor of Mukanos. Look at how, how far back Trangerade is. Ooh, three wide. <laughs> Philip Lake wants so. Oh. Philip Lake gets run off course. He had been running down the race lead. He was trying to gain speed, uh, gain time on the race leader for all the traffic. And simply as they were three wide, the lap GTP did not see him. He's outside. Uh, Mischek was trying to make, uh, lose as little time rather as, as he could, just like Phil Lake was. And as, as they split them, they eventually came back together. Lake went off track. And what was a two-second gap has now extended to five seconds. That was costly. 
Yeah, but the reason Lake was so determined to try and get by them all was he had got it down to one second. Dolbrecht had not gotten through uh, that pack of cars very quickly. So the gap had gone down from two to one seconds, but now Philip Lake gets run, of course, is back up to five. And uh, we know we're losing screen for just a moment. We will be back here momentarily. The battles have broke up, so everyone's taken a bit of a breather. Then we'll get pictures back for you because we do have a battle for the GTO lead. And uh, also still this battle for third, fourth and fifth in GTP, I'm sure, will still need to be resolved. Certainly does. They've got more lap traffic. Every bit of lap traffic is another potential opportunity. It's Rob Olenek up ahead of them. Kratrick trying to extend the gap so that in case he gets hold, held up, he doesn't open the door for John Keefe. He's going to look to the inside, down through Erst. Keefe still gaining time anyways, but not enough time. Down and around through Sternwacht and Canal. John has been wanting this position. He had it briefly, and then unfortunately had to give it back. I think it's been a commendable job by Kratrick, honestly. On that wonderful breath and no one around him to smell it right now. He's got a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a gap back to fourth place. Ooh, nicely done by Simo Raba. Put the car in a perfect position. Keith lost very little time. Same thing with Jungluth sneaking through there. Uh, confirmation, Tanner McCullough has retired from the race, so down to 12 cars, uh, 7 GTPs and 5 GTOs. Yep, still 12 cars circulating around this track. Boy, there's been a lot of ebb and flow, which I guess isn't too surprising at this track, uh, be between this battle for third. Oh, and going wide through Erst, or was that a slowdown maybe from John Keefe? This gives Jungbluth fourth place, whichever the case. Now the big question becomes, uh, is uh, Jungbluth able to run down Martin? Because he's been stuck in back in fifth there all race. Does he have anything that he hasn't shown us yet? Good question. Curious to see if he could maybe try and run down and be more decisive with Martin in that number nine. And things have gotten tight once again with the GTOs. Mukanos being caught by Trangrid. Trangrid got a little bit of a curb there going through that right hander. It's a bit of wheel spin that allows Mukanos to escape a bit. I know this race isn't over yet and there could be drinks in him, but so far the first two thirds of this race, I don't think Mukanos has put the wheel wrong. He pressured uh, Olyanek to get the lead and he's withheld, uh, that he's withstood the pressure from Trantre since he's been in the lead. So far it's paying off with the number one on his position ticker. And let's see if he can... Uh, uh, very close moment they look like there between Jungbluth and, uh, and Trantre. And Jungbluth did a great job getting by. Keefe, unfortunately, catches him at just the wrong moment through Bianchi. He's going to look down to the inside and sneak through, but not without the damage done, as he's now got a second and a half to make up on Fabian. But they leave our leaders alone in the GTO to settle their own battle once more. Trangrade not able to take advantage of the two prototypes coming through. We're down to 16 minutes left to go. The clock is ticking away and time is running out for these drivers to try and make overtakes. Down through the hairpin once more. Trangrade seems to, he, he's tantalizingly close at times, but it's, it's almost like once he gets close enough, there's just nothing for him to try and get that last little bit done. We've seen Trangere win a Lotus 49 race from 8th place in the final turn, so it will never count him out. 
Granted, that was Talladega, that was but... <laughs> yeah, a little bit of special circumstances. This one a little bit different. Well, he's getting awful closer. This is getting down to just a couple car lengths, even on the straightaways. Let's see if he can do anything out of Bianchi. This is one of the places where passes often happen. Just uh, not a good enough run off the corner. <laughs> yeah, Trantre's been around. I mean, he, he knows what he's got to do. He's been hanging too close for too long behind Mukanos to not do nothing. He knows his job is to try and win this race. It's early in the season, so you definitely want to win to try and give you uh, some bragging rights in the points early on in the season. Um, but how does he do it? He hasn't been able to make Mukanos crack yet. He might have to do it the hard way. And that Zolda, that's very hard indeed. Well, unfortunately for Ove, Nick Mukanos just missed out on the championship last season to Rob Olenek, who now he's going to have a nice little points haul over if he holds on to this first place. So I really think that Nick's going to keep a firm grasp on this thing. Or at least he's going to be very determined to do so. Uh, so that he doesn't lose, uh, or can get maximum points, rather, I should say, over Ove Trangrade, or excuse me, Ove, Ro over Rob Olenek, in order to get himself an opportunity to take the championship this season. We switched back to Fabian Jungbluth, who, oh, makes a mistake coming out of the Kleine Chicane and makes an easy opportunity for John Keefe. Yeah, I wondered if Yoon Blue would be... Oh, and off goes Keith. Uh, he'll have to g give that up, and sure enough, there goes uh, all your neck. I, 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 sorry, Dream Blue forever. I wondered if Dream Blue would have the pace to run Martin down, but no, and especially with us trading back and forth, this is just uh, giving Martin Kredrick third position right now. Yep, a little bit of after you. No after you for Keith and Yoon Blue here. John, ooh, with a good run coming off the Ix chicane. He looks to the inside at the last moment, but comes back to the racing line and thinks better of Getting into the closing stages of a race now. You can see the gap between the two GTP leaders has came down a little bit, but still, as long as Trustkin doesn't make a mistake, at, uh, tw that six-second gap should be manageable. But, you know, he's just got to be careful around these lap cars. We've seen definitely plenty of scary moments out there today. Yeah, I, I guess at any moment we could see someone clip the curb wrong, get a cut core chicane. It's going to all swing right back in favor of somebody else. So as much as I talk about drivers needing to hurry to make something happen, uh, it is certainly not a doomsday scenario yet as we get yet more cloud cover. Temperatures have been relatively cool out oh, here all Lake. day. Whoa, Philip Lake just had a great save and we're going to get it on replay when we finish this GTO battle because Trantere was looking for the lead there. Meanwhile, on screen, this battle between Trangerade and Mukanos getting incredibly tight. Coming down to the hairpin, does Ove maybe start to poke his nose out? No, he's going to stay in line, maybe looking for the launch off this tight right-hander. Still nothing doing. Open setup, so that could always be the blame. And let's have a look at this replay hit. I believe this was the moment with Lake that you caught. Yeah, so he's dealing with some lap traffic. You see, uh, in a couple of turns time, he clips the grass and he almost spins it. Steinbach, and now Johnny tries to stay out of the way. Bianchi. Yep, look at that. <laughs> Outside of the track catches him way off guard. Some very fast hands. And we need to come back live because I think Trank Raid's finally on the go as he puts a threat on Nick Mukanos into the Kleine chicane but can't make the pass happen. He's got the bit between his teeth now. 
Yeah, he was definitely running a different line than Mukanos down the back straight, making Mukanos check his mirrors, think about what he's doing. I wouldn't say he was alongside him per se, but he was as close as he could get to being alongside without actually being there. So Trent Ray is definitely turning up a wick a little bit, and they have some traffic coming by them here. Let's see how this affects things. That is uh, Phil Lake. Just getting up to the back of Trangrade. He gets through him, but then he gets held up through the Ixh Kane. Doesn't hold up the battle, but certainly costs himself a few seconds. Now, uh, GTO lead is also coming up here to lap the slower GTO of Michael Haynes, who goes off, runs through the gravel, and lets him by. Doesn't want anything to do with deciding how this battle plays out. Less than 10 minutes to go. Looks like Ove backs off slightly, resets, and sees if he can get another opportunity later. They're going to be caught by Johnny Bell here soon. Will this slow up Mukanos a little bit, or will it hurt Ove Trangrade more? You can see in the top left corner of your screen, we're not really missing anything in the battle for third for GTP. Oh. In fact, it's broken up quite a bit. Oh, and we have a car nice off. check. Has had a misstep. Coming through Butte. Let's see if we can find what happened as he gets the car turned around. He's got a crumpled up fender. It was... Boy, it happened quite a while ago. He was trying to limp this car back. It all started here in the Kleine Chicane. Here we go. Oh, just lost it on exit. And then he must have clipped the curb just right or something because... Well, no, I guess he just goosed it too hard because he'll just spin it around here and unfortunately put it in a very awkward spot, actually a very blind crest as he had to do an Austin Powers to get it turned around. Thankfully, he didn't get hit by anybody. Oh, got, got quite close for one of the three GPs. That's why there's an F3 box and that's why they tell you to check it. Fortunately, he must have checked it just enough because I don't think any of those cars got any more tore up. All right, these two don't have to check their three boxes. They know what the situation is as the sun comes back out. How will that affect their handling? Yes, they do pick up an incident point for running in the gravel. No, that doesn't stop them from doing it. Well, they have no incident limit on this series, we should point out. Train grade awful close this time. I wonder if he's going to have another go at them as they come up to Turlamin. A little bit of a defensive move from Mukanos into this second chicane. And that doesn't give an opportunity to train grade quite yet. Well, now the clock's about to enter the danger zone, really. I mean, we're, we're definitely within the closing stages of this race now. Um, Mukanos hasn't succumbed to the pressure at all. Trantere really needs to make a move stick. The closest we've seen him get is the run out of a first, uh, out of Bianchi, down the back straight into the chicane. Uh, I, I don't know if that straight's long enough, though, where you can make something happen. Mukanos is oh, going defensive here. here. Andre looking down the inside here, actually. I think Mukanos will be able to hold him off. That's the best challenge Andre has given. He's going to try a long way around coming through Sternvacht. And I don't think there's just enough grip on the outside. But he tries to carry the momentum. Maybe up to Bianchi. Goes all the way. Dipping wheels into the grass in that corner. Holds on to it. He is low, oh, using the four-wheel drive through the gravel. That gives him the opportunity. Takes a poke, but comes back to the racing line. Well, the great finish we are setting up here for here in the Camel GT Rallycross Championship at Zolder. And Nicholas Mukanos and Ove Trantre. And uh, don't be surprised if you see Trantre do that every single lap until he finally makes something happen or the checkered flag falls. You know, interesting thing I'm noticing about this second chicane into Turlamin, Mukanos keeps going defensive, and it, it looks like it slows him up a little bit more than Trankrate, but it looks like he parks it on that second apex, and poor Ove has nowhere to go every single time. This is really the one battle we have left on track still but it's uh, definitely a fun one to watch we can keep our cameras on here for the next five and a half minutes 
Trantre hopes that uh, isn't long, isn't that long. He hopes to have Mucanos behind him way before then. They have some traffic catching up with them. Let's see how this changes since. That's Martin Kratrick. He's not in a battle. That's a lapped car back there. That's Mischeck. So Martin really didn't need to affect that, but he's going to try and swing around. Mischeck follows him through. Splits them for a little bit. Is he going to be able to get by without interrupting this? He's lacking uh, some no. speed on the straight. Oh, boy. Oh, and Tentre gets way sideways and jumps over the curb. But does he have to turn serve a slowdown? There's a big question here because he might still be able to recover that gap if he doesn't have to. It's up to about one and a half seconds. Not the end of the world, I don't think. On board. Maybe he just got put off a little bit. Maybe he touched the grass. Hard to tell from the onboard. He only lost to about two seconds, two and a half seconds back now. Like you said, not the end of the world, but the way that he was struggling to try and get by Nick, this takes away precious opportunities as yet more of the cars go by. That's Keith and Jungbluth still fighting for P4. Well, Nick is going to have to hope that these two cars both clear him before they get to turn one, and they do. And that's going to help Nicholas out a little bit. So now Trantere really needs to drive hard to run down that gap. Jungbluth as we ride on board the 007 camp, looking back at Keith. John's starting to put a little bit of a threat on here in the final minutes. Let's see a pass now that we've been relieved of that battle for the lead in the GTOs, potentially for P4. Down in the GTP, Simo Raba just ahead of them. Hopefully he'll be able to stay out of the way. Another good run from John Keefe, a fantastic run coming out of the Kleine Chicane. Not good enough a one, though, as he runs out of track. Yeah, I really thought this battle was done and dusted. These two have broken up by about a second a little while ago, but no, sure enough, it's back on and probably going to be going on to the checkered flag in just about two or three laps time. Whoa, much late on the brakes there was John Keefe. Almost gave uh, Fabian one up the bat. And they've got lap traffic of their own class up ahead. Peter Mischeck. Sometimes it can be harder to overtake a car within your own class. Ooh, John looking good here. Off of the X chicane. He's stalking him. Ducks to the inside. Looking to try to outbreak him into Earth, but he breaks way, way late. Somehow he keeps it on the track. So does Jungbluth, though. Holding on to the around the outside. They switch back into Sternenwacht, and it's in favor of Jungbluth now. But the momentum comes forward for John Keefe around Canal. Still side by side as they work through Bianchi. They brush doors just barely, and Jungbluth has to give it up. And what's even better is I've got no idea how many laps are left because Justin Elbridge just crossed the line with two and a half minutes to go. So that could be two laps, that could be three laps. These drivers are just going to have to hope they're out in front at the right time as the lap car goes over the curb, lets them both by. Whew, that was gutsy stuff from John Keith. And from what we've seen uh, on pace, it seems like they can't get away from each other. So. Jungbluth holding on to within about four tenths of a second. Going to try and get this one back. Thirteen cars or fifty cars? I don't think it matters, Sam. They give us a good show here in Camel. Yeah, absolutely. I think it, as, as unpopular as Zolda can be among some drivers, I think this is a good car-track combination because it is so unpredictable. These cars have so much power in them that can lead to wheel spin and it really punishes mistakes. Now, Albrecht is coming across the line right now and there's just a little under 1.14, 1.13 left on the clock. So I think he might be on the final lap. It's going to be close, to be honest. Depends on when iRacing gives them that white flag. We're keeping an eye on them just in case. This will be a nice victory lap for Justin Albrecht. He only comes in sporadically here for Dirty Torque on these broadcast races, but when he does, he's usually a factor for the win. He's left Philip Lake behind. He's managed the traffic. He's managed the chicanes. He's controlled this car magnificently out here today after putting it on pole. Can this Nissan bring it home? And does he have one lap? Or rather, I should say, does he have half a lap? 
or one and a half laps left to go. The balance we've been keeping an eye on are a little broken up right now. So the leaders of those battles will be hoping he's coming to the trekker. The drivers behind will be hoping, no, one more lap, please, one more lap. And let's make sure if we do get an extra lap, everyone's got enough fuel. It's through the Ix chicane. He is really swinging it through. And this is it. It is a victory for Justin Albrecht today in the GTPs. Mukano's follows him home off. as Mukano's takes the victory. Phil Lake is going to be able to get second place. He is well far ahead of Mark Kratrick, so no dramas there. Yeah, right. right. Uh, him and Mukonos were pretty close on track there. Uh, Philip Lake had, a, Lake had a very scary off in the final chicane and uh, somehow just escaped through the scrap. And replay now through X. Woo! Boy, we're seeing a lot of cars uh, have last lap hits with the tires and then finishing just fine today. Meanwhile, uh, if we come back live, Jungbluth and Keef are still finishing. So this isn't over, but Keef has pulled a nice little gap to Jungbluth. And indeed, he's going to come across the line with a fourth place. That is going to finish the last of our cars. So... Let's take a quick break here on the Global Sim Racing channel where we'll come back with the official results as well as driver interviews on screen. You'll see all the upcoming races here on the GSRC. Circuit Zolder. We just watched round two in the Camel GT series, and Justin Albrecht got a victory here in Belgium. He finished uh, about 13 seconds ahead of Phil Lake, though for much of the race it was two seconds, then it was five, and then Phil unfortunately had a little bit of a whoopsie at the end uh, and limped it home. Martin Kraterik way behind him 
in P3. Once he managed to get by Keith and Jungbluth, he finally solidified that podium and ran away with it. Keith took fourth, just edging out Fabian Jungbluth, who takes a top five. Johnny Bell, first car a lap down, finishes sixth, and Peter Mischeck seventh. Tanner McCullough was a DNF, unfortunately. Sam? The five car GTO field is headed by Nicholas Mukanos and Ove Trandre and Rob Olyanek, both of which at some point during the race would have wanted or hoped for the victory. Uh, finishing second and third positions respectively rounding up the podium. Simo Rabba wins the battle for the rest in fourth place ahead of Michael Haynes. So with that, we've got a couple of our drivers ready to talk to us, including our Winner in the GTOs, Nick Mukanos. Let's pull Nick in and uh, talk about having to withstand some incredible pressure. You inherited the lead a little bit when your teammate fell by the wayside, but boy, Ove made your work to keep that lead. Yeah, I was trying not to do exactly what Rob ended up doing, and then Ove was right on me. We're usually pretty close, and I just had to make my car as big as possible. It did seem like you were defending a, a few times down into the second chicane did you feel confident about managing to hold him back or were you honestly nervous uh, about being able to keep him there for the entire race i felt good in the beginning but then i got like a two second gap somehow and he caught right back up so that's when i started to sweat it out i can understand that when you see that sort of pace uh, in his hands especially ove with how talented he is. Uh, this round was a little lightly attended, but how do you rate this win for yourself? Do you still feel pretty proud of this one? Yeah, there's a lot of people missing, but I still feel proud about it. It was a battle until the end, and Ove is really good. Rob's really good. There's a lot of fast people still that join them. Yeah, I'd say you should be proud of this one, uh, especially at a difficult track like this. Congratulations, Nick, winning round two. Hopefully, we'll see you back in round three. Yep, thanks a lot, guys. That was our winner in GTOs. Sam has caught up with second place in the GTPs, Phil Lake. Yeah, Phil, uh, second place obviously looks good on paper, but uh, how uh, bummed are you that you didn't get the win here today? Uh, yeah, pretty pretty disappointed. Um, I had really strong pace this week, and um, I was looking forward to having a good fight with Justin, actually, and, and um, I just got caught up in some traffic like really early on and lost two or three seconds and um and then from there it was just like a out of control spiral of everything that could go wrong went wrong and um yeah held on to second though so happy with that yeah we saw uh the three wide pass that went on with the gto in the middle a lap gtp on the inside and you on the outside and kind of ended up in calamity there did that kind of seal the deal did you think oh well i'm just driving for second after this point or were you still trying to get back up there uh no i never i never stopped chasing the leader for a couple of reasons just you know if if justin had the same issue then then the gap would have closed back up and also if you kind of roll off to 95 percent or whatever so I, I usually start making more mistakes then so i, I like to stay 100 percent the whole race well that makes sense because we definitely saw a couple moments where you were right on the limit almost had a couple more scares do you want to talk to us about that moment where you had the car halfway sideways uh, going through bianchi the the turn before the back straight there and also uh you cross the finish line in style as well <laughs> Yeah, I was I was pushing pretty hard. I actually got the gap back down um, from 10 seconds or so to about six. I think Justin had slowed down at that point. But yeah, I, I had a few uh, a few scares. I put a wheel on the grass in Bianchi and uh, managed to save the car. And then yeah, the last chicane, I kind of switched off and it, it bit me again. So yeah, it was a race to forget, but second isn't bad for points. So I'll take that. All right. Well, congrats on the podium. Commiserations, it's not the top step, but uh, we'll see if you can get it done in Snapdown. Yeah, thanks, guys. That was our second place finisher in GTP Field Lake. Sure. Yep, I think he's taken a pragmatic view of things since 
last season he wasn't facing off against uh, Albrecht for the championship. Probably doesn't expect to this season if Justin's attendance is the same, but that's going to wrap it up for us, including a few thank yous off to the Camel GT series for bringing us back for another season of coverage and to iRacing for putting us on the iRacing eSports network. Make sure and subscribe when you get the opportunity just by hopping over to their YouTube page. Thanks to the companies that provide the software and hardware for our broadcast listed here on your screen. And additional thanks go to June Lalonde, who provides our wonderful music. See the screen for how to get a hold of more of her great work. Thanks to the team today, Sam, Amjad, and Doug, with a little bit of help from Stefan Schlocker back behind the scenes. And of course, if you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at GlobalStimRacingChannel.com. You can also check out our social media on Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. The next race, we're heading over to Sam's neck of the woods. Snetterton holds the next round. That'll be Saturday, June 29th at 1 p.m. Eastern. We also have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. But until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track. <laughs>